All right, guys, welcome back to the project. So this is by far one of the most ambitious projects I have ever taken on. So in this one, we're going to be building a four-piece bedroom set, including a wide dresser, a tall dresser, and two matching nightstands. Now, all these pieces were designed by me, but they came that they were heavily influenced by stuff I'd seen all around the internet, and mostly by craftsmen and shaker-style furniture. Now, like I said, this is the most ambitious project I have ever taken on. There is a lot of pieces that go into it, and overall, just the the cost and the you know the massive amount of material that I had to put through here was just insane. With the rough milling stage done, it was time to start moving on to some of the final work. So we're starting here by gluing up all the panels that are eventually going to make up our dividers. So after that first rough milling, I let the pieces sit for a few days so that they could kind of move and do whatever they were going to do. And now with the final milling, hopefully these pieces should never move or go, you know, go crazy again. And again, here you can see just the sheer number of pieces that are in this project. So the important thing at the beginning here is to just get the structure together. Because right now we have a whole bunch of small pieces and we need some way for them to actually connect to each other. So that rather than having a bunch of pieces, we have the frames of each of these pieces of furniture. So this is the frame for the tall dresser, uh, part of it anyway. And you can see here just as slowly, bit by bit, the frame is starting to come together into an actual 3D piece of furniture. Now the most important thing here is to take the time to label all of your components. I can't stress this enough when you have this many pieces going into a single project you need to take the time to label everything mark your ups and downs all that kind of stuff so you never run the risk of putting something in the wrong place And you might be wondering why in this video I'm not going into a whole bunch of detail about this project. And that is because there is actually a big long series that is available on my YouTube channel right now. Where you can actually watch me go through the entire process of building this bedroom set in a lot more detail. So there will be a link to the playlist for that project both at the end of the video here and in the card up above. To make the glue up less stressful overall for this project, I decided to break it down into multiple small sections. So in this case, I'm starting with just our side frames, because I knew that I'd be able to get these together and be able to add in my walnut panels later on, so that overall this would be a much easier to deal with project, because trying to glue up a full dresser in one go would be probably nearly impossible, I think. So being able to take the time to you know, slowly work on these frames and get them fitting up perfectly made life a lot easier. Next up is the walnut panels. Now these are probably the most exciting and disappointing part of this whole project. Uh, because these came out absolutely beautifully, but in the way that these dressers are set up, you, for the most part, will never see these amazing bookmatch walnut panels. Now, looking back at this video, I'm still kind of shocked that I was able to pull these panels off because they are very thin, and as you can see here, the ones for the tall dresser are very, very long. Uh, so it was a definite feat of uh, just, you know, creativity and just trying to make something work out. Thank you. 
Like I said before, I wanted to make the glue ups on this project as easy as possible. So now that we had the side frames all assembled with those walnut panels mounted, we could actually mount those side frames to the vertical legs that are going to you know, create the structure of these pieces of furniture. Now this is a perfect example of why I say this would be far too complex of a glue up to do all at once because you can see with all the number of pieces we've got on the inside as well as the outside frames as well as all the long pieces that would have to come together doing this glue up in one go would be you know just terrifying so the fact that I was able to do it in these you know these smaller individual sections definitely made life and the project overall a lot less stressful. The other important part of this is I was able to go back in and make sure that I could fine tune all these little things. So all these maple drawer supports I could go in and make sure that they were sitting perfectly flat compared to the legs. Then on the tall dresser there is a small cabinet section so I needed to build a floating panel that would sit in there and nothing works better than a breadboard end panel for that so I just threw together this nice simple panel. And again, this is very important, this is a breadboard end, and if you want to find out why, I highly recommend going and checking out the detailed build series. The last thing to do with the sides here was on the nightstands, I wanted to again add in a little bit of a filler panel, just because I found the inside of these frames to not be looking so good, or as good as I expected them to. So. These little simple maple panels cleaned up that interior view of these nightstands. Once the side assemblies were fully geared up, we could start moving on to getting all of our longer pieces fitted up here. So you can see where we do have the full structure, but now we need to go in and actually create some support between the front and back long stretchers. So we're cutting in all these little spacer pieces that are just gonna add some rigidity to all these individual frames. Now nothing is actually gonna be sitting on these frames. They're mostly just for a, the visual look, but you still need to make sure that they are structural because they are still in some way holding this whole thing together. And the most important thing is you want to make sure that they can warp and end up pinching the drawers in the long term. So you want to make sure that everything is as fastened in place as possible. As we continue to build up the interiors of both dressers, now it's time to add in these sliding dovetail panels that are actually going to create most of the supports in the wide dresser as well as the cabinet section in the tall dresser. So we now have all these individual frames and we need some way to connect them together vertically. And there's no better joint for this than a sliding dovetail, even though it is probably by far one of the most complicated and just generally annoying joints to cut. Uh, it does have the benefit of it doesn't allow these pieces to be pulled apart, uh, for gravity to separate them, anything like that. Now I will say that using this dovetail bit did lead to some tarot, which you will see in kind of the final shots in that, in areas that I had to kind of do some fixes on. But overall, if I was going to do this project again, I would still use the sliding dovetails because I think that, that you know, just the strength that they bring into the project uh, is Im immeasurable. You know, it's way better than any other form of joiner in here. So 
So each of these panels is going to be what supports the drawer slides in the center area. So they're a nice solid connection that transmits the weight of the drawers all the way down to the bottom. Now I found that the bottom frame needed a little bit of extra reinforcement so I added in a couple feet right under that middle frame there and the screws are all hidden using the sliding dovetails. So if I'm being completely honest, I have never faced a more stressful time in my entire time as a woodworker. This this glue up was the single, you know, I my adrenaline was going, I was freaking out the entire time just trying to make sure I got everything together in time and got everything square, straight, you know, all those all those good words. Uh, it was it was an insane challenge trying to get everything together, uh, especially doing it all by myself, but it all it all came out just fine in the end. Once everything was all glued up and I was now having to deal with these massive structures all floating around the shop, I got to work on the outsides and get everything all cleaned up. So we're just going in and adding some of those final little details and that, just trying to make everything look as good as possible. And of course we get to apply our first coat of oil which was just the icing on the cake this day uh, you just after all this hard work I got to just see what these pieces were finally gonna look like until this project I had never actually used uh, mechanical drawer slides before so this is one of those ones where you kind of learn by doing it the hard way which is on an actual project now, I didn't think it would be that challenging to figure out, you know, really you just mount them to the case and hope that everything comes together nicely. Making the drawer boxes though was a different story. This is where I really felt out of my depths and that's where this wonderful tool comes in. This is what's called the Lee D4R Pro Dovetail Jig. Now, I know a lot of people are not fans of machine cut dovetails, but in this case, when you guys see how many drawers I, have to, I had to make for this project, I'm sure you'll understand why I wanted to get this thing, because hand cutting all these dovetails in hard maple, I, I'd probably still be doing it months, months, you know, probably years later. So yeah, it, well, this was an absolute lifesaver. It helped me get good, accurate drawer boxes. I'm not saying that it's completely necessary, but it definitely saved my butt on this project. When it came to fitting the drawer boxes in between the drawer slides, I found that it was good to go for a, a moderate fit. You don't want them too tight because then the drawer slides will jam up, but if they're too loose, the drawer slides won't actually attach properly and you'll end up with kind of a loose floppy thing or it'll end up too tight on the ball bearings. So it took a little bit of trial and error with these soft closed drawer slides, but eventually I was able to get them to work out nicely. And again, you can see just how many drawers are in this crazy project. Now I usually go pretty fancy with my back panels just because it's one of those areas that I usually like to add a little bit of detail, but in this case, there really is no reason to go fancy. It's just some quarter inch uh, sanded acid plywood, and yeah, we're just done nice and quick and easy. So the drawer fronts are probably the most exciting thing for this whole project because I knew that on one hand they were going to be super easy, but I also wanted to make them more complicated for myself and that is I wanted to try and do a grain run on as many drawers as I possibly could. Now obviously on the tall dresser here there's not really any way to make the grain run, but I made sure that all the pieces came from one board so they would have a good consistent color and tone and grain structure to them. Another area where 
I got to exercise a little bit of the uh, creative side of things was on the door for the cabinet area of the tall dresser. So I knew for a fact I wanted to do a book matched uh, walnut panel to match the side frames of these pieces of furniture. So this was just again another good opportunity to play around with some joinery and overall just make this the fanciest door I've ever put on a project. By the way, I'm using bridle joints here, which are probably the scariest joint to cut on a table saw, but they work, they work pretty good. The final part of the project was to make the tops because we need something to uh, close off the big open holes that are the top of these dressers. So the customer that I was working with here saw the desk that I built a while back and said we want something based on that style. And so if you've, if you've seen the video where I built that desk, you know that on the desktop I've got this white oak center with some walnut edge trim and then walnut breadboard ends. And what this does is it creates this really cool effect where you get these this framed white oak panel uh, surrounded by walnut. And I think the finished look, you know, I personally love it on my desk and on this project, it came out looking absolutely amazing. It really, in my opinion, brings the whole piece together because overall in this project, there's not a whole lot of color. There's not a whole lot of way you can bring in a ton of detail with your drawer fronts and that. But just adding in that simple walnut trim to the tops of these dressers just created that perfect, like, you know, final detail. And with the final finishing stage, this brings us to the end of the project. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is one of the most intense projects I've ever done, and I really enjoy doing it, and I'm mostly just glad that it's done. So, as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.